All right, so now we have this setup of the one, the four, and the five chord creating this 12 bar blues. Well, let's make this a little bit more colorful now by doing a couple of different things. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to convert these chords into what we refer to as seventh chords or dominant seventh, they're called. So we're gonna make A into A7, D into D7, and E into E7. And you're gonna start hearing a little bit difference in, uh, in the sound of the chord. So what we're gonna do is take this A chord here, and if you remember earlier on, we did A7, which you can do by just removing the middle note of an A chord, or you can add your pinky on the first string third fret, which sounds really nice, or you can do both at the same time. But again, it, whatever's comfortable for you, there's no right or wrong, it's just trying to figure out how to add that seventh in there. And then we're gonna go to D, but instead of going to D, we're gonna go to a D7 chord. Okay, so now what I'm doing is putting my first finger on the second string first fret, my middle finger goes on the third string second fret, and my ring finger goes on the first string second fret. And now again, it's got a lot more of a kind of a bluesy sound because of that seventh. And then if you remember, we talked about E, and how we can just add the pinky here to make a seventh sound on the second string, third fret there. Or we can take the ring finger off. So you can see why learning your chords are really important because you're gonna be using those in this. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the uh, 12 bar blues that we talked about where we're going one, four, one, one, four, four, one, one, five, four, one, five. Only this time we're gonna be playing them all as seventh chords. So let's give this a try. One and two and ready, go. Sorry. Let's make sure you've decided which way, before we move into this, I want to give you a little time. Make sure that you've decided that this A7 or this A7 or whatever, right? And be visualizing your D7 because it's already coming up pretty quick here, right? So you just got to kind of visualize those. And, and I'm, what I'm going to do is slow down even more to give you a little more time here. So one and two and ready, go. One and two. Now go to the four chord. Back to the one chord. Again. To the four chord. Back to the one chord. However you want to play it, that's a seven there. Like this or this. Here comes our five chords. You gotta think about E7. To D7. A7, to E7, to A. Now you'll notice as I was playing it, I was doing a number of these chords in different variations of 7th. Just for you to decide which way is going to work best for you. Now of course this requires some practice if you've never played these before. But those 7th chords are really going to start making your blues sound a little more bluesy instead of just playing them as, as major chords. But you just have to decide what works best for you. You know, when you make an A7, which way feels best for you? Or you play a D7 or an E7, which way feels the best for you in the open chords? Because as we start moving up into bar chords and things like that, then we're going to take on the shapes that we use as bar chords and decide what we like best and things like that as well. Okay, so now what I want to do before we move on a little bit, I just want to take this same idea that we're doing right now, but I want you to start thinking about how you could have a little fun with the rhythm. So right now we're just doing this. And of course we know that we can hit dynamically. We can hit harder in different spots and softer in different spots. Whatever it is we like, okay? But the other thing that we can do is we can start adding in those up strums in between. Let's say your downs are here. And again, always be aware of how important it is to start developing your rhythm when you play. So I'm just going to take this A7, which again, I play a lot by just pressing on these three strings with my first finger and then putting my pinky over here on the first string, third fret. So if I was doing... Now it's one, two, three, four, but I'm doing this, putting my downs here, and then adding ups in between. So 
So now all of a sudden I've got all of these different rhythms. And you can see that now it begins to sound a bit more, again, a bit more colorful. It doesn't mean it's better. You might want a nice slow or a nice slow one with seventh. And that's okay too, but you can see how you can take that speed and just speed it up and you get a completely different groove happening. So don't ever underestimate the power of your rhythm. As guitar players, we get so caught up in what's going on with our, our fretting hand and all the crazy things that we do with it, making chords and scales and licks and all these other things, that we forget that it really is the rhythm that drives all of these things. Because if I was to not strum, it doesn't matter how cool that chord is, you're never going to hear it, right? So it's the smack of those strings with my guitar pick or my fingers or whatever it is you do that starts creating the vibration that is the guitar. So it's really important for us to try and get used to that as we play. So I'm still playing a straight rhythm here. I'm just having some fun with my rhythms as I play. Okay. Now, before we go on to the next thing, the last thing I want you to think about a little bit here is you don't have to dedicate yourself to just major chords or just seventh chords and like make a decision and then that's the way you have to go. You can switch back and forth between seventh and major anytime you want, right? So I might be playing an A chord. See, so I'm just playing a, a, a major, A major, and then I'm just adding the seventh whenever I want it. Okay, now D is a little bit harder because you got to flip back and forth, so I might want to make a decision with that, but E is another great one where you can just be playing E, and you can just add that pinky on. At any time you want, you see? So it kind of spices up again what you're doing because I could start with a, just a regular A sound. So there's lots of really neat stuff that you can do with it. So again, there's some things to think about a little bit, to ponder on, and when you're feeling good, come on back.